Hi, I'm Mark from Property Ventures. Welcome to this week's New Zealand Property Podcast, where we interview the property expert around New Zealand. Hi, and welcome back to the New Zealand Property Podcast and video series. And today we're welcoming back our regular guest, Matthew Gilligan from Gilligan Rowan Associates. Welcome, Matthew. Thanks, Mark. Uh, very pleased to be here talking to your listeners. Great stuff. And can you, uh, just for the people that haven't heard you before, uh, tell us who Gilligan Rowan Associates are. Uh, Mark Gilligan Row, a chartered accountants based in Newmarket in Auckland. Uh, we are property specialists. We not only normal chartered accountants doing tax returns and financial statements, but we are also educators and uh, specialist advisors from a property investment perspective. And I run the property uh, team providing property advice and also do a lot of tax structures. I've written books on property and tax structures and so forth. Great stuff. Okay, and so today we're going to talk a bit about Gilligan Row and Associates, what you're doing at the moment, but let's start off, uh, first of all, a bit about what you're doing personally. I know you've got a couple of deals you wouldn't mind sharing with listeners. Uh, let's listen, tell us about it. Uh, yeah, so first thing, I, first thing is uh, I've got around 35 properties myself. Uh, most of them are in Auckland, uh, so I'm an Auckland investor, and I tend to buy assets that have the ability to subdivide them uh, and I do that because what you, you get when you have subdivisible property is you buy one asset but you have the potential going up in value. So for example, if you buy a house, I'm just trying to get myself into the light <laughs> there. <laughs> if, you, if you buy a house that has four sections that you can cut out of it and the end value of those houses is a million dollars each, uh, then even though you might have paid a million for the original property, what's going up in value is the $4 million worth of uh, property that is the potential. So even though you haven't developed it, uh, you end up with this massive capital growth because uh, you, you've got the subdivision potential. So that's very much an investing philosophy that I have, is, if I, is that if I'm buying for long-term investment, I like to buy property that is subdivisible because I get the land back effect, the underlying potential. Second thing is, uh, with my investing, I actually like to do the developments. So I have a small construction business which I run and we do the civil works, so we'll do the drainage, the uh, earthworks, preparing the sites, the fencing, uh, the retaining, uh, the concrete drives and so forth. So I actually do my own developments where I develop the properties um, and, I, and my involvement is I actually my team go through and prepare the site and then uh, I usually use an, an external builder They'll come and do fixed price contracts, build the houses. Now, I, lo I love that from a commercial perspective because if you uh, are good at feasibility and you can work out the potential of a site and make sure it is a profitable site, then when you do the development, you've made all that instant equity on the way in because you you are effectively getting that development margin. So that's the commercial reason is you're getting instant equity, uh, which is the development, development margin on the way in. But the tax incentive this is if you develop it to hold, in other words, you're not developing it to sell it, you're developing it to rent it out. There are specific tax exemptions that make the uh, make the gains non-taxable uh, if you rent them out over the long term. There are some specific rules that you have to take care of, be careful of, to make sure that you don't end up being taxed. But if you do it right, no tax, no, no GST. Uh, so if you make, say, a million dollars on a development develops a hold, that whole million dollars is non-taxable, it's all yours, and uh, that's very and much. In that situation there, the other people who are selling, uh, developing to sell, yeah. they're, they're getting sort of losing $400,000, $450,000 of their million dollars well, that, with, with taxes, that, GST, and that's right. selling so, costs. So, you know, made up numbers, let's say $4 million worth of property and you sell it, uh, it's, you're going to have to pay those awful real estate agents. <laughs> money, money very well spent, Matthew. Yeah, 3%. So, uh, say 3% of 4 million is 120 grand. So, your million's now uh, 880. Uh, so, you then pay GST on the gross margin on that. So, GST on uh, 880 might be, um, say, 130,000. So, 880 becomes 750. And then you pay a third of that in tax, which is 250. So that comes down to 500. So you started with a million by selling it, you end up with 500. And generally, your disposal costs 
of agent and taxes, including GST, will be around half. But of course, if you keep it all, your cash flow gets, gets tough. So another thing you can do is you can say sell half of it and keep half of it, pay tax on the half you sell, and uh, you know don't pay tax on the half that you keep. But to do that, you need specialised tax structures, which is tandy being a developer with an accounting practice. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, unless when people do get in trouble, they try it themselves. They don't really know the, the real the real figures at the end of what it's really going to cost them. Yeah. They go, oh, I made a million dollars. Well, no, you haven't. Well, so yeah, no, that's something I want to talk about, which is ninja dust. We'll get to ninja dust shortly. <laughs> uh, but you know, back on point, people think, oh, you're a developer, and they characterise me as a developer selling uh, that there's developing assets to sell, and I'm not. I actually develop to hold, and I develop in Auckland uh, because Auckland's fundamentals are so good. We have such a uh, tight supply um, position and such phenomenal demand. It really underpins Auckland's volatility. It's, even though we're top of the cycle, I can't see a big crash because there's such a supply imbalance. Also, the incomes in Auckland are so high that it makes the market quite resilient if interest rates go up. Whereas other areas, when interest rates come up, can suffer uh, quite substantial losses in terms of the capital values of the properties, which threatens your deposits if you put deposits on property. So that's why I'm, I'm focused on Auckland. In years gone past, I've, I've uh, written about it in my book, Property 101. I've taken a thrashing uh, on assets I've had out of Auckland. And for that reason, I don't like to have a lot of uh, debt uh, amassing in areas that could be volatile. Because if you, that volatility kicks in and the assets form a value, you still got debt, you start losing capital. So that, that's why these days I, I only pick areas in New Zealand that I consider have good fundamentals to reduce that, that volatility. Because it's not just about surviving the up market, it's surviving the down market. The down market, we're not really going to see a down market, I don't think, until we see a spike in interest rates. We, that, that's nowhere on the horizon. Ninja Dust, I mentioned Ninja Dust. and. Um, one of the things that I was telling you about is uh, Gilligan Road is increasingly becoming prominent in the property education circles. Uh, we have a school called Property School, for example. It's, um, it's only a very small school. It has 30 to 40 people a month, and we run that all year here in Auckland. It's quite a popular thing because it's low, low cost, but the ideas that we teach in that school are quite cutting edge. Um, and they are for the, well, they're for the mum and dad investor buying their first investment property, but they're also for the more sophisticated investors. Um, we like to think that we are a step ahead. Uh, we're an academic organisation. And uh, I use a lot of the case studies out of my own affairs and show, show people in the school my numbers. And basically the principle is, do what I do, get what I get. Um, and in that vein, we've now got two of Sarasevi joining us. Mm. And we've got a new division Auckland Property Mentors Limited, uh, and that is a joint venture with Tua Sarsevi, who's actually ex-property tutors, Sean Woods, uh, business property tutors. Very sad that Sean passed uh, passed away in, in February, if, you, if you're not aware of that. Uh, but with Sean, uh, with you know Sean's business withdrawn from the market, property tutors is no longer there. Uh, we have uh, Tua on board in a joint venture through Auckland Property Mentors. And in fact, we've got our first event coming up, which is, uh, we call it call it the Property Leaders event. It's on November the 12th, uh, and it should be should be a great event uh, that's uh, exposing some of Tua's very clever investments that he's been making. He's got some great killer deals that he's been running uh, for his clients, and he's going to be showing those to the, to, the, uh, uh, to the audience and just talking about how he does it, because uh, of course he was trained by Sean. Uh, that's where the ninja dust comes up because we've noticed that there's a whole bunch of people out there that are kind of uh, throwing, you know, ninja dust. Look at me, I'm an amazing investor. Uh, look at look at the number of trades that I do. I'm doing, you know, 100 trades a year or whatever it is. But if you actually get into it and look at the numbers on those trades, they're talking about their gross profit, which is what I bought it for, what I sold it for. Maybe they get the renovation cost. Uh, and so they look like ninjas, they're amazing, you know, shiny, pretty investors. But uh, when you take off interest, conveyance and cost, and you've got to buy and a sell, the rates, the insurance for the period that you own the asset, you then take off GST, uh, income tax, agents fees, and all of the holding costs and hidden costs, 
uh, that ninja dust starts to actually sort of uh, dissipate a bit. And when you look into the numbers, a lot of those deals aren't as good as they, they appear. Because if you just talk about the buy and the sell, it, maybe you, you are making 50 grand, but when you take the age of the GST income tax out, uh, those deals peel back to real numbers, which aren't that great um, on, on a lot of the deals I've seen. So what, that's what I like about Tui. He's an ex, uh, he's an ex cop, so he's a, he's very straight, and he's a ex valuer. So when he looks at something, he uses a, you know traditional value as approach. He does a current market analysis, what's other stuff sold for. Because he's a trader, he'll back up what he thinks he's going to get for it. He's very experienced in renovation, which is going to be uh, showing showing our audience. Uh, on November the 12th, that that event is event, going to be showing his way of renovating, and, uh, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing. We'll, seeing yeah, we'll get to her on the sh uh, show probably next week, uh, so you can actually meet to listen to meet to her and, and learn a bit more about him oh, good. before the okay. event, which will be good. Yeah. Uh, and, and what I um, you talk about Ninja Dust and also me media media pick up on Ninja Dust, but also what I love about what what we do. No, the, 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 the other term for ninja dust is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just absolute nonsense. Look, look at my margin, but they're showing you half the story. You just look at the whole story. What it's going to cost you all the way to the bottom. That's why I hate the media. The, the three was in the media. Media are always three, six months behind yeah. events going on in the property. Yeah, Side there's a bit of a pop in the property market at the moment. I've noticed yeah. stuff's really selling quickly. Yeah. I had a client list uh, three properties. Uh, they actually uh, business. Partner of mine, and we um, rearranged our property holdings, and then they cashed up their side of it. And uh, as you know, you've listed one of them, but the other two, the other two, uh, sold in three working days, and yeah, they sold well. Yeah, uh, yeah, but big, big numbers coming through on Saturday when we first get through our one. So uh, yeah, yeah. No, so, there is again the media store now that finally picked up that July last year's happened, and mm. they're going on here. I'm struggling a wee bit. We're actually going quite well yeah, right so now. It's a pretty hot market. So the people will probably watch this later. So I'll just say it's October the 19th. Mm. Um, we're waiting for Winston to give us his decision tonight. <laughs> um, no idea what that's going to be. I don't think. I don't think Winston knows. <laughs> <laughs> he's having a, he's slipping the tails. The coin to gets the right one he wants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, to, just to go back to the, the known ninja dust, I love what we do because we, we ourselves, we're out there in the market so we know what's going on. What I love about when people in this classroom listen to the likes of yourself, you know what's going on. It's today's news today that you're listening to and that, and two appears to be the same and that's what on the 12th of November I guess you're going to be having is people talking about what's happening today in the market, not a year ago or six months ago. Exactly right. Uh, you know, uh, go for an awful lot of property in Auckland. I'm developing, I've got 12 subdivisions that I'm doing at the moment. Uh, four of them are uh, actively starting construction in the next four months. So next year will be a busy year. So when I say I've got 12 subdivisions, what that means is I've got consent going through on 12 sites that I own. But actually I'm only, only going to build four maybe next year. Each one of them has four or five houses on it, so maybe I'll be building 16 to 20 houses next year. And I'm actually going to show some of those subdivisions at, at the Property Leaders event on November the 12th right. uh, with TOUR and I'll be running a section mark on subdivision land banking and how you can make money out of that as an investor. It doesn't necessarily have to be that you have to have millions of dollars to, to benefit from the concept of subdivision. Mm -hmm. and this is this concept of land banking that I was alluding to. If you're going to own um, most investors will only own one or two properties. What I say is, well, if you can, make sure at least some of that okay. has this land bank potential. Because if you've got one property, but there's four titles under it going up in value, you're getting much higher growth. It makes you richer in the longer term. As long as you can definitely subdivide it to the, those number of sections, there's less risk doing that, in my opinion, now than buying a standalone home well, if you, if you buy a single family living house, just a, a house that doesn't have subdivision potential because it's small land, big house, so it's a you know, small site, what you've got is growth on one property. Now we're top of the cycle in 2017, so I don't expect to see significant growth in the next 12 months. I don't expect to see growth for three or four years. Uh, my, my pick for the next cycle, um, you know, I think will just be flat, if not declining, until at least 2020. Um, 2020 would be my next pick for, for the, when you start to see some upside. America's Cup here in Auckland, that'll, that'll fire Auckland up. 
So between now and 2020, if you're investing expecting growth, uh, I think you'd be disappointed. Maybe we get 5% next year, but certainly wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me to see fl a flat uh, position on Auckland property, just as a lack of affordability. And, and the, if you give it three, four years, you'll start to see incomes coming up, rents coming up, and what today is unaffordable in three or four years' time will be more affordable, normalised, and you can get some capacity for growth kicking in. So 2020. So you, you buy assets at peak value that don't have subdivision potential, that don't have instant equity, no X factor, uh, and then you suffer cash flow for four years. Why are you doing that? Um, what you want to be doing is getting assets that have instant equity that you make money on the way into the investment so that if you don't get any growth, who cares? You made it when you purchased the property. So instant equity is about properties you can renovate and revalue, subdivide and you know sell the land off or build and keep the houses. Um, you know, properties that are purchased with a discount, uh, all those basic strategies where you actually make money on the way in, second secondary rooms, secondary dwellings like minor dwellings on the back, flat conversions under the Auckland Unitary Plan. Um, you know, in terms of your building ideas, uh, another thing I've been playing with lately is uh, transportable houses, relocatable houses, moving them onto sites. Anything that creates instant equity, it's so important to do it if you're buying houses in this market because I think we'll have flat growth. So if you're getting no growth, you've got to make it on the way into the investment or you're not going to get anything out of the asset for at least four years. Absolutely. Yeah, so this is very much the thrust of our Property Leaders event, is about saying to people, uh, don't look at all that ninja dust that's been chucked around out there. Talk to people that are actually doing it themselves, that actually have the wealth themselves, and uh, look at their ideas and see, are they relevant to the environment that we're working in? Because there's a whole bunch of old technology in terms of property education being running. People who are saying, oh yeah, buy a house and you'll get capital growth in the future, that's a 2012, 2013 story. You need to be making instant equity in the way in. If you're talking to advisors that are telling you how to do that, then that, those are good people. Well, one of the other speakers, I think, in the event is a guy called Dennis Chan, and he's, yeah. uh, and what you mean speaking about it, it seems like a natural progression. You would bring someone like that into your business. Do you want to talk about uh, what, what, what and why Dennis? Yes, so uh, Dennis, Dennis is uh, Dennis Chan from Auckland and Phil Housing Consultants. Uh, Dennis is a resource consent specialist. So what he's good at is he'll look at a piece of land and tell you what you can do uh, on that piece of land. So he'll, for example, tell you that you can fit three houses and he'll draw you the houses that you might be able to fit on the site. He can then go through and get the plans drawn up, get the town planning done, get the surveyors, the engineers, all of the people you need and the processes you need to run to take you from nothing to having a consent. So he, he has been working with me and helping me with some of my sites, and it's a natural progression that uh, you know we start to introduce him to our clients because he's very good. I must I must say, yeah, uh, he was he was so useful and so good that Gilligan Row ended up actually buying half his company. So it's now it's now Gilligan Row joint venture, uh, but it helps our clients that are in the business of subdivision because they've got access to Dennis. Most of, the, most of the time, though, Dennis is just working for members of the public, so anybody can approach him and uh, get the benefit. But he, he'll be at the Property Leaders event telling people uh, how the resource consent process works and giving some practical tips on how to minimise construction costs. Because it's another thing we see a lot of people say, hey, you can build this, but they don't build enough density, they don't understand the unitary plan and how, uh, how much denser a site can be, or they... Uh, draw houses that are very expensive to build because they don't get the construction right. So you need to not only be thinking about subdivision and increasing capacity with the site, you also need to be thinking about how to minimise cost. Who's your builder going to be? Uh, so we typically help our clients think about building cost before they start drawing plans. Mm -hmm. They should be thinking about the market, and how much margin they've got, mm -hmm. what those costs are going to no, be. If you have an experience you want to do a development, you definitely need a dentist. On yeah. board, so so he'll be there, and then uh, yeah. we'll, again we'll get him on in a few weeks' time, also. But in the meantime, if you're desperate to meet Dennis, um, mm -hmm. email me or, or Matthew, and we'll, we'll put you in touch with him. Yes. So, um, any uh, anything else you want to mention about the twelfth, Matthew? 
Uh, look, all I would say is that if you are interested in creating instant equity, in, cre in other words, creating wealth as you buy property for your investment, or if you're interested in learning about how you can really increase the capital growth of your portfolio over the long term, uh, those are key concepts that we'll be delivering. And I, I consider that we have some of the best people on the market with Tua uh Dennis, myself, Janet Zukawa mm. on tax structures, Chris Peterson on finance. Chris, is, Chris got a great finance product that we're bringing in actually, and it's a, a Gilligan Row uh, uh, Peterson Finance joint initiative. And that is, uh, we don't have it yet, but we expect to have it by March next year. What we've done is we've approached a banker that is looking at bringing in 80% investor finance uh, at an interest rate that's actually very reasonable. Around six percent, so it's perhaps plus half a percent to one percent above current cost of funds. So we're hoping to have that in for March next year. So Chris is going to be talking a little bit about that, uh, and also the business of development finance is quite complicated. So he's going to be talking about how that works. He's also going to be talking about uh, how mum and dad investors can maximise the finance in this environment, which is very difficult for banks at the time. He's also going to be talking about trading finance products he has for traders. Uh, Janet Zukawa uh, is going to be doing the tax section. She's going to be talking about the tax structures for uh, not only ordinary property investors, but also people in the business of trading or in the business of doing developments. Uh, and I'll probably go over the joint venture structures uh, as well. So the, you know, this event on November the 12th, you can book it on the GRA website, www.gra.co.nz, and you'll see top of that web, there's a banner at the very top, just click that, uh, Property Leaders uh, banner, it'll take you through the booking form. Tickets are $25, they're non-refundable, uh, so uh, recommend you get your seat, we've only got 300 seats, so get your place because we, we all sell our events out, uh, so get a seat before they're all gone. It's a nice, geez, it should be a good event, I'm looking forward to the day. Yeah, um, and it's nice to have property benches behind us. You're sponsoring us. You'll be there on the day, won't you, Mark? Absolutely, will be. Yeah, yeah. There's, um, there's, you know, probably this uh, podcast series, you get some real gems. We have some gems from you today, Matthew. Oh, really? we, we, first person <laughs> I've actually heard the saying when they they think no pressure, but you know when they think the next uh, the market might lift, and a good reasons for it. Oh, yeah, well, it's um, not and also just... today's also what's happening today's market, also in different ways to do things to take the risk out of investing. Is that you don't just go and buy something hoping you're going to get capital gains. Not going to happen yeah, well, necessarily. Well, Mark, if you if you buy a property and you're expecting capital gains, but you actually have a decline in values, yeah. If you haven't got instant equity, you're losing cash. You're losing your deposit. Mm. That's the first That's thing right. that goes. But if you've bought a property with instant equity, where you've created wealth by doing something to it when you buy it, and the property value drops at the end, what you're losing is margin. Mm. You're losing the profit that you would have made when you sold later. Well, actually. The first, the first bit of the decline of value is, is not your money you're losing, it's the margin. So at the top of the market, it's essential you understand how to create instant equity on the way into a deal. Mm, right. Um, before we wrap it up, do you want to uh, talk about any particular deal you've done recently that might interest, uh, interest listeners, or just, just one will do? You know? I know you'd like yeah. to talk about 20 of them, but <laughs> <laughs> just well, one today. I bought, uh, I'll hear the rest on the 12th. I bought four or five properties in the last four or five months, three for myself, two for, two for clients. Um, and I'm going to be covering them at the Property Leaders event in detail as case studies. And I've got a couple of clients that I'll have up there who'll be uh, showing what we're doing with them. Uh, and I'll be talking about the ninja dust surrounding development feasibility because there's just so much nonsense out there. The costings I see from other, other people in the industry are terrible. Uh, people don't know how much it costs to do a subdivision. But a deal, okay, well, I bought a, I, I just did a subdivision in Sunland Sand in Manuel. Which is not a great street in Auckland, but it's a you know very average middle of the road, Mandy River Street. And I drove past a site, uh, number fourteen Sunlands, and I noticed it was on the market. And I jumped on Property Guru and saw that it had had a very long marketing campaign over six months. The first vendor, the, the first vendor agent, got fired because they couldn't get the price expectation they wanted in the eight hundreds. And the second agent got appointed and they tried for sevens and then they came down to the sixes and that's when I got interested. 1128 metre site, short driveway, it's a rear site, uh, but at least a three lot site. 
And I, so I had a look at the site, poked my nose over the fence, saw there was a subdivision going on next door, which always pleases me because I think, ah, free infrastructure. I can, I can jump into the infrastructure. So free pipes, that sort of thing. They're really expensive to install. So that's a plus. Uh, reasonable area that's sort of coming through with the neighbours all gentrifying and rebuilding. So anyway, they they sent offers in the sixes, so I offered them five, seven, five. And uh, the agent scratched up another buyer. They came in and uh, they offered 580. So I was 575 cash. The other guy was 580 uh, subject to due diligence. So what would you do, Mark, if you were to buy? Would you take the Can't cash off? Can't beat the cash. Can't beat the cash. 575 cash, 580 um, subject to due diligence. It was $15,000 difference. I'll possibly still take the cash. Oh, okay, so you <laughs> take the cash. Well, they took the due diligence offer. Really? So the, the, <laughs> they took the 580 subject to due diligence and the DD people went through the house and did a methamphetamine test and the house came uh, positive for pee. Nice. It wasn't a high reading, but it was still positive for pee. So anyway, they were home buyers, so that scared the hell out of them. They ran away and the, at the con I had the second contract on it, so it fell back to me. And so I then said, oh, you know, pee, goodness, that's terrible. You know, and a, a light contamination of pee, it's a couple of grand to fix it, if you know what you're doing. Uh, and then it's $1,000 of retesting to make sure that any, anyway, so uh, long story short, I negotiated down to 540, which was a bloody bargain, to be honest. Anything in that street's worth 700 of that size. Uh, and so 540, I'll spend 360 on the subdivision, rough number. So what, that's 900. Um, I'll probably do two relocatable houses if I can lift them and get them down the driveway. Uh, they'll be about 240. Lift and shift the existing house, that's 100 grand to move it and tidy it up. Uh, so it's 340, so 900 plus 340, 1.25, add some interest, 1.3, three houses in that street are worth uh, 195, 650 each, 1.95, uh, possibly 700 each, so, so somewhere between 1.95 to 2.1. So taking the lower amount of 1.95, it's costing me 1.3, uh, all done, there's 650 at the site. Meantime, uh, it's rented for five fifty a week, which is about five percent gross, four percent after rates, insurance, repairs, and maintenance. So it kind of pays its own way, near enough. Maybe it's minus five grand, but I'm getting capital growth on one point nine million. My holding cost is on one point three, you know, five forty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I because I don't have to build it anytime soon. But I will go through and get my consents in place, get a resource consent, and then decide: Do I want to build it? Do I want to build it in a couple of years' time? Maybe when the market goes down, cost of construction goes down, the tradies get a bit cheaper. Uh, or maybe I do it now. Uh, point is, I'm in no hurry. That's a great buy. I've got that instant equity in the bag. I just have to do the work and build it. Otherwise, I'll wait 10 years. What is 1.9 now becomes 3.8. Uh, uh, and so what is profitable at the moment is much more profitable later on. So if you take a long-term view in your portfolio building, you don't have to do the deals straight away in terms of the subdivision. You can just enjoy the benefit of the land bank. So I think that's a good example. It's one of five examples that I'll look at the property leaders event and I'll be putting up the process of how I found the properties, what I'm doing to them, uh, the team I'm using, how I did it. So people can just copy it and use it until it. So it uh, would be great to see people at that event. Mm, absolutely. Book at, book at GRA, www.gra.co.nz. Okay, here just uh, well, this is there because many people will be probably listening to it, uh, the webinar with Tony Alexander. Uh, oh, yes, assume, Tony, assuming Winston yeah. decides today or tomorrow or in the weekend, what is, when's that due or scheduled for? Uh, I think it's October the 24th. I've got a webinar with Tony Alexander, who's the Chief Economist at the BNZ, clever guy. And uh, we're going to look at, I'm going to look at the tax implications of uh, whichever government gets in, uh, which I think for national will be very little business as usual. Uh, and if Labor gets in, which will be very interesting if they do, there's all sorts of things investors need to be thinking about. So if Labor gets in, uh, I'll be talking a lot. If, <laughs> if National gets in, Tony will be talking, talking a lot. lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jolly good. Yeah. Okay, hey, we'd like to thank you for your time today, Matthew. Um, My pleasure. We'll welcome and, you back again some other time. Yeah, any of our events, just jump on our web at GRA. We've also got a monthly, uh, we run a, a monthly property information evening, which is just a generalised discussion, Mark, on general education processes, that's also on our web. It's called a property information evening, and I get lots of 
people turning up to that because it's just market analysis of what's going on. So feel free to join any of our events. Hey, thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Yep, no worries at all. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much.